we're basically called out to do team assist. There's another team out there called Deep Heart. And we are actually camping overnight at a ghost town, which I'm super excited about. The team is called for a team assist in a ghost town. Hello. Matt. Hello. All right. Hello. Good seeing you again. This way, there was a gentleman that was coming out of the fence line. Mm -hmm. See right there. First place that they went to school together. Integrated, yeah. fully integrated. integrated. Yeah, yeah. Nice. As they go off roading to a location, who or what do they find? Still store back here. The first one burnt, mm -hmm. and then they built a bigger one on top of that land. Um, about the eight, or later 1800s, the coal ran out, so they moved everything onto another coal mine down. Uh, All right. Susie, I think. Susie, is that you? If that is you, could you try your best to stay within this area? Does this ghost town still have occupants? Go figure. What? Whoa. Well, when he walked in, I heard like somebody was walking in hardwood floor. Then the team is called to help one of their own. I knew beforehand, because I live there, and I'm also a sensitive, that there was stuff going on in my house. Just getting started. Really wanted to get down to this, because she called out to us to help um, a couple times before, and it was day walk visits. The team discussed a strategy for this three day long emergency case. And just seeing my son scared like that. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's good to actually see it. Because he wasn't even saying it that loud, like he was saying it to himself mm -hmm. that he was scared. I love the fact that I'm on a paranormal team because when stuff like this happens and I can't fully explain it myself, being new myself to everything, I can call them and be like, hey, can you come help me? Now, why would a and then the first public event of the year as the team is invited to an old school. Was there a roller rink down here? Yeah, there's a roller rink down here. Some of you might know me, some of you might not. I'm a team lead for Paranormal Endeavors. So we do a, a spiritual and scientific as well. The clapping and applause abruptly stops as something sinister invades the environment. Ooh. I hate school. No, what is it? No, it's a bitch. Yeah. yeah. That's all the nice one. Moving past technician's assist. Who do you hide from? The wolf. The wolf. Go down again. Mm -hmm. Who is this wolf that you're talking about? Thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.
So, <clears throat> shadow case that we did uh, last month, you pulled that off, you went there with us. You didn't run out, um, you know, with wet panties or screaming or any of that stuff. So we applaud you on that, that you did that, you did good there. Um, broke down a little bit when you are doing that uh, validation with Kelly, but, I mean, it wasn't terrible but we want to you know just like any of us want to get that under control right right so it's more like i just realized i wasn't crazy mm -hmm. like um mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was a relief thing i get that um but yeah i but there's some understand. clients that see that and they'll freak them out even more because they're supposed to be like they're the expert they look yeah. at us you know and it's like when you see the bomb maker running out of the situation oh this must be serious you know yeah i understand yeah so, it's been a few weeks since the shadow case, but I, I, I thought the shadow case went great. I kind of lost it there for a second and got a little emotional, but I think I can keep all of my emotions under control, hopefully, for the next case. And I definitely I love all you guys. Awesome. Um, I don't know. I really feel like I need to, like, I don't know how to make words for it now. Like, I feel like I need to, like, get more in balance with myself so I can understand, like, my feelings, like, when we're at cases and everything mm -hmm. and, like, be able to control myself more. De like, kind of like what you were saying, that's definitely yeah. what I would like to work on, personally. And, like, communication with the group. I feel so insecure and I want to get more secure with myself so I can mm -hmm. really talk to you guys about, like, what I'm feeling and seeing and everything like that. Like, those are... Two yeah. big ones that I want to work on. So I really want to keep going with this. This is pretty. Um, I'm really excited to train as case manager and work with Mary. She's hilarious. I love her already. And I don't know. I'm just I'm just really excited. Uh, the shadow case itself was it was just such an eye opener that I'm not crazy, and it was such it made me. I can't even put it into words. It's. It's crazy finding a place where you're accepted and people that can help you learn more about yourself and I'm just really excited about it all. So on this one, thank you for coming on such, such short notice. This one was kind of really short notice. Um, we're basically called out to do team assist. There's another team out there called Depart, and uh, it's ran by Matt Bennett. And so they have a place that they're checking out. I don't think they've ever been there before themselves. No, it was no. uh, they were turned on to it by a fellow Dominion member of mine. Okay. I just found out yesterday we got an investigation, like we just got invited last minute and well, I just found out in the last minute and I'm glad I said yes and I'm here with my guys, it's been a long time. So we are about to leave to go to Buxton, Iowa and we are actually camping overnight at a ghost town which I'm super excited about and I'm actually bringing my fiance with and she's kind of freaked out but I can't wait to see her take on it once we get there. Um just outside of uh, Albia or Bussy. Yeah, down on that area. Yeah, so we're gonna go there. Uh, from my understanding, because I didn't, wasn't told very much about it, because I researched, because we had Mary kind of put together something really fast, because of short notice, but um, there's not really many structures left. It's not like a, like a town, like some of the ghost towns in the Wild West are still there, and they have every, like tombstone and stuff, every building's still standing. It's not, most of them were gone. Um, but um, there's been, uh, I guess, um, some activity there from what we've heard. Um, We're hooking up with Depart and Scythit on uh, a neat little gym in the rough. Um, a little known place, not a lot of people get to go to. It's a nice private area that is private property, so people don't, you know, they have to trespass to get on it. But it's an old abandoned town. Um, it's a remnants in the area was actually two towns, one named Buxton and one named Miami. And they were literally across the street from each other. One was a wet town, one was a dry town. 
So you could drink across the street, but you couldn't at the other side. So there was all kinds of crazy Wild West stuff going on back then. It was a pretty, pretty lawless town. So on this one, this case is a little different than our usual, which is kind of a nice vacation, if you want to call it that, for a paranormal investigation, what we do normally on a day-to-day. Um, it's a team assist. We're invited by a couple other teams out to check out a ghost town. Um, and it's basically a town that doesn't exist anymore. Most of the buildings are gone. Um, it's kind of in our backyard. It's kind of nice. It's to find, you know, it's nice to find out places like that that you never really knew about that were like that close to you. So 1800s, it was a, a coal mine town, a railroad. Um, it says here, old bank vault and a warehouse are still there. Uh, footprints and foundations of YMCA and hotel and an old well. Uh, private, it's private property now, um, but the owners of it had granted permission, so granted for our teams to go in there. Um, this is my first joint team event that I've ever been to. and Actually, it's the first time I've ever been, in, been invited by another team with my team to come out and help. Um, it's really interesting to me, and it's kind of like once you're in the paranormal field, like every other paranormal team is kind of like a big family. Group. Like there are other people that understand you that are outside of your group that, you know, it's, it's nice to have. And I'm really excited to meet more people. I'm looking forward to work with uh, those other teams. But looking forward to this one. It'll be a nice little way for us to get out, train a little, get ready for our next investigation. Uh, reports of pictures being captured, uh, anonymous voices, um, shadow figures, things like that. And uh, then there's uh, actually BuxtonIowa.com, which actually has some more information and details here. So has some old pictures as well what the town would look like. Um, and I have the copy on this, so you just kind of pass it around a little bit, take a look at some of those photos from what it used to look like, if you want. Why well, they got a picture of God? Because um, it was really, they had the church. There was no oh, yeah. church there. Oh, really yeah. religious. The museum has a lot of stuff in the church. Um, this would be a nice change of pace, um, less serious. Um, still go at it though with our, our respect for uh, the community and our teams uh, that we're working with. It's described as the toughest town east of Dodge City. It wasn't really such a tough town. Um, it says here, this person had lived there for a number of years. Uh, there was gambling, drinking, knife welding, gun shooting, uh, but most towns of the time had a certain degree of lawlessness. The social life of Buxton more than balanced uh, the shady side. I hope this investigation tonight is going to be fun, you know, and I hope it don't, don't turn like the last case in chapter 5 that it was, I think, extremely exciting. But. Oh, we have fun tonight and, you know, we learn more about our equipment and we have more practice. Pack up here, I'm not bringing very much going light, so it should be fun. I want it, folks. All right, so we are almost there. Any uh, visions or thoughts that anyone's picked up on this journey so far as we're getting closer? Not yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm neither. It's, it's just been kind of a, I'm giddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> it's kind of unusual for. I mean, usually something gets picked up by oh, either one of you or both of you, or me or even Rafi sometimes. <laughs> and you are? This is India. India. India, glad to meet you finally. Hi, I'm Chris. Hi. Rafi. <laughs> what? Rafi. Rafi. Yeah, okay, you're Rafi. He's one of our previous evidence analysts in the past. Okay. Um, he's field researcher now, the both field researchers. We've all done evidence before. And then, of course, you met Jared. Yeah, I know Jared. Jared so. Yeah. Um, so I've had an opportunity to work with Chris 
and Matt when they've called me in on some cases. Um, this will be kind of neat that we can go out together on a, a non-priority case where we can actually just kick our shoes off and have a little fun and just investigate for history's sake. And it was a big thriving ghost town or a coal mining town. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of uh, African Americans, Swedish, mm -hmm. and a little bit of everything up here is the first first place that they went to school together. Integrated, fully integrated. integrated. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And uh, they had a few fires. The one uh, general store back here, the first one burnt, mm -hmm. and then they built a bigger one on top of that land. Um, about the eight, or later 1800s, the coal ran out, so they moved everything onto another coal mining town. Mm -hmm. So this town just kind of went to nothing. Yeah. Almost so that, overnight. Yeah. yeah. Because that was the curiosity that you had, it's like, why isn't there more structures left? Yes. Yeah, that's the question. Here. A lot of the a lot of the houses, if I am understanding they correctly, moved some to Bussy, picked, them, picked them up and picked yeah. them up and moved them to Bussy. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of structures within that. And you can tell the and you can too. tell the ones that are in town because they're the they're like the little small modular homes. Mm -hmm. They were all built the same, just yeah. cheap, easy, efficient same housing way. for the mm -hmm. for the miners. Yeah. yeah. It was that really cheap plain lumber that they just mass produce out mm -hmm. of the grass. Easy to grow up, easy to tear down. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because we went to the website for this that we found that Mary had come across and sent to us, our case manager, and saw some of those photos from yeah. like, or like 1900 or whatever in those I have houses. I too for you as you look at. Okay. Houston Roots is what's called. And then I've wondered, since you've been here that long, have you ran into anybody when they still lived here in town? It would have probably been old by now. Um, there was a show on IBS that was yeah. called uh, Buxton Root, or Buxton, Search for Buxton. Okay. And a gentleman was looking through his history and come back here to Buxton. Mm. And the book actually talks about reunion that happens every year. Okay. Two. Well, well get the show on the road, show some of these other places. Let's do All it. Right. All right. I'm founder of SciFit, Chris Hughes. This is my wife, Ray Hughes, my daughter, Terry Smith, and Colin Smith. Our son in law. My son in law. We're mm -hmm. South Central Iowa Paranormal Investigative Team. <laughs> and you were founded or established what year? 2009. Okay. And they're the whole reason we have this location out here right now. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Matt Bennett, uh, one of the founders of the park. This is Sean Larson, one of our lead investigators. Uh, Teresa Larson, his wife and their daughter, Spirit Larson. That's our team that's here now. That's, yeah, that's our team that's here now. We had one other guy that just, just took off, but yeah, that's who, that's who we are. And so, this will be our official time, our first time officially in the field working with both of you, actually. Really, yeah. We've known each yeah. other for a while, but, and we've been know. And we've and we've done public events together. Yeah, but, yeah. but not really it. an investigation right. type thing. Yeah. And I know you've worked with one of ours for a, a little bit, you know, you met. Uh, yes, Jared we have, we have, we have had him a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know Jared so, very well. Yeah. So it'd be nice to officially, under an Endeavors kind of roof, kind of work with you guys, yeah. too, and see um, what we learn from each other. and. So you're gonna take us. What's the plan first? You're gonna take us to. We're gonna. I think we're gonna head up to the graveyard first before we lose sun sunlight. Okay. So we can see that. Sounds good. So they're kind of driving us out in the pasture. It looks yeah, like. Yeah, I it's feel some like farm field. I feel like they're gonna kill us and probably eat us. <laughs> and eat us. Yeah. 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 Especially me, cause I'm the chubby one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't feed them for that. <laughs> Whole two months. Jeez. Uh, rock we got and, here. Rocking and rolling here. I just smashed my ass between the center block. Yeah. <laughs> Rough ride. <laughs> yeah, it was. So the first thing that was going to happen on the itinerary was they're going to show us the old cemetery that was there. Um, a lot of old gravestones were there. I think somebody had uh, claimed that they'd seen one um, with the year like 1799 on it. So really old cemetery. Um, it's kind of just hidden back there in the middle of nowhere. Look at this. It's a family plot. Is what About 45 minutes, Alicia. That one and that one. This one and that one right over there with the fenced in area are both family plots. Family plots that are fenced in. What's with the pipe fencing up here? I don't know. What I got when I went when I walked into it. A yeah. A church? But when I walked into it I got almost the same feeling like this as a family. Plot. Yeah, I was drawn to it but I didn't feel I could walk into it. It's so. a it's an odd energy. 
Uh, when we first got here, the first thing I noticed was the warehouse. And it was definitely probably one of the most luring buildings that we had that we encountered last night. Um, the first thing we did is we went to the cemetery, which I immediately picked up on a female energy there. Didn't you say that there was like, what would you call like madams? Or, you know what I mean? Like, Lady of Nikes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady of Nikes. Pretty That's what sure. you're getting with oh, this yeah. one? Yeah, because all I can see is like cleavage and ruffles right here. Okay. And I'd like, I don't, I don't know. April. 25th, maybe? Or 21. Huh, she's staying close by him. Hmm? <laughs> oh, yeah. That? Oh, yeah. She won't leave aside. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. You should be yeah, that, supposed right? to be that. Yeah, you should. Commentary. Yeah, there they are. She's following very closely to him. Yeah. Because it terrifies her to do this stuff. Oh, India yeah. talked her into doing this, which mm -hmm. is a fluke. I don't know how many times she'll do it, but she's definitely <laughs> joining us, but she's not leaving his side. Oh, no. She's attached. <laughs> Conjoined twins. Yeah, she'd be holding his hand for sure. <laughs> I got you. Wait for it to get a little bit darker. Zoom back out. Okay. Yeah. Wait till uh, it gets a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. She'll be holding onto his pants, his uh, his kilt. skirt in the back. Yeah. <laughs> the handcuffs. She'll be <laughs> asked to be handcuffed. She too. might. She might. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> that way, if he runs, she, she's going with him. <laughs> we went into the cemetery. Um, lots of interesting poles throughout there. And uh, Indy and I are both were drawn to one section of the graveyard. Um, and as I was going there to walk there, I was called to another part in which we picked up on a girl. And I can say he got a hat. He got a long sleeve shirt. I just, it was kind of rolled until here. And I saw it. And then at the end, when we were leaving, I saw this little girl about like five feet one, five feet two, kind of like a yellow dress or uh, kind of beige, walking towards the same direction as the guy. When you're uh, a little more calmer, you, all you have to use is up to the yellow. So use the yellows for yes and the red for no. Okay? Because no takes a little more anger. So can you tell us what's going on with this area? Yeah. Well, he's got a little recording device here, and we've got all these different things in our hands. This day and age, we can record things now. There used to be a bridge that I crossed through here. Okay. The town over there. There's still probably towns on the other side of this tree line here. Cause, cause that's where you see me maybe being yeah. pulled this way. There was a gentleman that was coming out of the fence line. Mm -hmm. See right there. Where Kind of up right there. Mm -hmm. that's the trail. Yeah. Where I came from. And you led me straight to where you are. India is good with especially female and young female um, entities or beings. Um, I have one in my house, for example, and she's a little nervous to come out. We had finally found out from her that with India's help that she was abused. Bingo. K2. K2 and if that's happened to you as well, definitely I can apologize. Relate. I can relate to you there. I went through many years of abuse. Ironically enough, which we were just talking about on the way out here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I said that because that's what I'm getting. Yeah. Anyone or anything trying to hold you back from communicating with us. Would it help it at all if I tried to do a barrier around our circle here to push away something that might be doing that? Would you be able to communicate easier with us? Yes? Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, that's what I bring this in. <laughs> so it did seem on the spiritual side that this female was a little afraid and hesitant to come forward tell her story, but possibly because the male entity spirit that's with her, connected to her, um, 
keeping her from doing that. Susie, is that you? If that is you, could you try your best to stay within this area? If you could. All right. All right. Just hold on to him. Stay next to India. You can stay on the inside. You keep the phone away. It doesn't do that. Turn it off completely. You better get in here, Terry. Okay. Now I'm. I just think she'd be more comfortable. Okay, I just got here. an instant four. I just got an instant four point two, and now it's now it's now it's a point two. Yep, I just got a hit too. Right on, stay in here, sweetheart. Now it's at zero. Did you get that? No, I didn't. Darn it! I got it on video. Or she's connected to a man who wouldn't let her communicate. So. And now she's given a chance to do that with this barrier. Temporary, mind you. Did you hear that smacking noise? I felt it. I might try a little human dazzling rod here. Um, Lift. I literally felt it. And it's okay. Hello? To do that too. Did you hear that? We already got a hello. My hand's cramping. They're really cool. Oh. Whoa. When things start happening, you just feeling stuff, say stuff, because I still hear you, but I'm kind of half and half in my own. What is that? What is that? Okay, that's your life. Okay. I just see this white mist come across the screen all of a sudden. Yeah, it's light. Okay, yeah, keep on. I decided to do the human um, dowsing rod. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this, and decided to do it here. I didn't feel any threat or any uh, overwhelming energies to where I wouldn't do it. So I thought I would try it, see if we elicit more of a response. Get out. Get out? Do you want me to get out? One point seven, one point four, holy crap. Church point nine. <laughs> And back down to, to zero. Sunny, sunny day. I want you to move up here to videotape this. Thing. Bible, pages from a Bible, 1916. Preacher, 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 preacher. Okay. Give a big thank you to Sipit and Depart for inviting us out. Matthew Bennett, Chris Hughes, and their entire team. Um, this was a nice little experience for the team. Uh, definitely a place that I want to come back to again. Maybe stay a couple nights instead of just one. Yeah, actually I have one. And now I have a killer pain in my right knee. I don't even know why. Uh, definitely a unique place. Um, it was kind of in our backyard, hidden. One of the big things with herbs that we deal with, uh, one of the main herbs I use with my spiritual cleansing and stuff is mullein. It can be used uh, to deal with not only purifying evil spirits and entities and ghosts and stuff like that, but it can also be used uh, for cleansing the body um, in a tea or smoked. But yeah, every part of that plant is usable medicinally. as well as spiritually. It's pretty good. Okay. So, we are going back to my house today after a year and a half of um, Eric and his team doing the day walk the first time. Um, now I'm involved with the team. And at that time, the last time, we uh, were investigating a, a grouchy old man spirit in the upstairs. Okay, so this uh, day walk situation, uh, India, one of our own uh, field researcher and evidence analyst, she actually approached me a couple weeks ago 
um, about things kind of going on um, in our house again, uh, different things potentially this time, because we did a day walk there last year, in chapter four, you might remember that. And after he left, nothing really seemed to happen, you know, out of the normal. It seemed to get under control after that. Um, we kind of figured out the old man upstairs was, at that point, kind of the cause of it. I had a stern talking to him about it, and things kind of tapered off, or they were a little bit better. So, uh, we're about to go and do another day walk of my house and see what we can pick up this time. Jarrett's with us, and it's always nice to have a new view, you know, a different person with a new view there. The team had gone there before I joined up um, on a day walk, so I have not been over there myself, and it's been a little while, I guess, now. All right, uh, familiar place. <laughs> Yeah, uh, most a little bit of the activity so far has been um, one thing was in my bedroom, which is over there, mm -hmm. and then another thing was right here from the kitchen into the dining room, and then a lot of the noises and things that we hear throughout the day and evening are upstairs. All right, this is Sam? GBR Mobile Audio, and we are at India's house, Pleasantville, Iowa, and it's approximately if that clock's right. No, it's stuck. Okay. Um, second. 4.48 p.m. in the afternoon. I actually have to get behind you. This is what I was telling you about, Jared. Yeah. It accesses the hole underneath wall. my house. Yeah. It's a hidden crawl space. So the enemy. You. Never. You guys have been here before with these devices, but I'm a new one for you. Got an idea about how these things work? You can interact with them. I'm definitely not going in there. I'm claustrophobic, <laughs> so it's not happening for me. <laughs> well, I'm tearing the, the old wise leader to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's okay. I don't do. I'm gonna have to rinse off and exact in close spaces. Get the cobwebs off me. <laughs> yeah, that part of the house doesn't get touched. Sorry, <laughs> I don't have that bad of OCD. And on the other side of the crawl space, there's a whole entire rest of the basement that even India didn't even know about. Cardboard and debris in there, some old wood. But yeah, it's definitely, it's different in there. The energy in there, even just poking my face around the corner is like, yeah, kind of like where you are right now. It's like you're just staring at me and I'm peeking like that. That's gross. Like there's something in there for sure. Yeah. Yep. Staring back at you. Kind of. I had almost wondered, um, this is a possibility I kind of thought of, but I didn't have enough evidence to say, if that kind of a cloak Sorts. You know what I mean? It almost felt like it two separate energies, but um, kind of like at my house where the old woman shows up as a oh, young girl, correct. and we know it's the same person. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't rule that out because yeah. it's always not really it been fond of Ashton, but it's come out more in changing how it's showing itself. And it woke him up. It scared him to the point he was screaming at the top of his lungs. And he was so scared, he couldn't even walk down the stairs. I had to go up and get him. And he was shaking, he was freezing, he was just scared to death. And my my son will not go down the same path as his father and try the suicide attempt. It's not going to happen. I refuse to let that happen. The sacred holy root, or holy herb. All right. Shannon, you'll probably appreciate this one then.
this. So what this is going to do is bring it to the point of forcing it the only way it can go out is through the front door. Mm -hmm. I uh, I learned a lot today. I learned a lot more about my house that I never knew. There seems to be a lot more activity down there in the basement than I thought and in the house in general. Um, I really want to get the whole team in here and do a whole night investigation. I think my family and my fiance and I could probably learn a lot more and benefit a lot from the team coming in here for a full night. So it will be something that I have to talk to Eric about and hopefully we can get back here sometime soon. Being all shy and stuff. I learned a lot. Do you think you can probably deal with it better when I'm at work at night now? Probably. Probably just leave me alone. But in other words. <laughs> Hopefully the cleansing that I did uh, will help calm things. stay for a little bit in your home for the evening we'll talk a little bit just to kind of catch up because we had this meeting off camera a little bit but the reason that we're here you know and now um, just what's happened since we last investigated when we came as a, a team well first it was quiet after you guys left I mean nothing seemed strange or out of the ordinary of just the normal stuff that we usually heard mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, my son started waking up in the middle of the night again, screaming, saying that people were whispering in his ear. Mm -hmm. And then we went down to Louisiana for vacation, and it happened there also. And I know of something that follows the males in his bloodline on his dad's side of the family. And uh, the way that my son described it to me, it sounds like the exact same thing that his father had described to me also, mm -hmm. and his uncle, so. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned a three, or three o'clock, two to three thirty time frame? Yeah, usually it's between two, no no earlier than two, and no later than three thirty. Mm -hmm. That he, he wakes up all the time just screaming, saying people are whispering in his ear, mm -hmm. just absolutely hysterical. So we'll be here. I wanted to come back because I've been here more than even you and kind of get the energies and the vibes and do a walkthrough first. Get some preliminaries done and then turn it over to you. Um, stay the night here, see what has happened. We have the quick kit, which is used for purposes like this, or those day walk advanced visits. Um, have that uh, camera in there. You can have that kind of set up through the night, aiming at you. Yeah, I do want to. <coughs> I do want to cover this. Um, getting some interesting mm -hmm. off of it. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll definitely cover this. We'll do kind of a lockdown to where I'm here for an extended period of time. Where's your son at now? Is he in bed? He's in my bed downstairs. Okay. Okay. So we know. Actually, directly below us. Okay. So if he starts screaming, you'll hear him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Attached to Sean Jr. Check on 
something like a, a pinprick against my thigh. I looked to see if you had something reflective I uh, other than your belt. But Is that you? What? Did you hear anything? Yeah. I'm back here. What did it sound like to you? There was a growl and then a thump. Okay, a growl. Okay, good. That's what I heard. I wanted you to say it without yeah. me saying what. No, it. there's a growl and a thump right here behind me. Alright, possible growl being heard. Approaching 2 o'clock. Brittany. Brittany? That was. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty solid. Is that the female? Thank you, Hector. Because we've been here before, haven't we? We've had a talking before where we told you or anyone else who's here, even if it was that kind of grouchy farmer guy that was here before as well, that you got to play nice. We've had this talk before because we mentioned we'd be back. So here we are. We were called back. That doesn't make us too happy that we have to come back. I'm gonna tie it now, but I'm just down the street. Alrighty. I'm turn it over to you. Uh, we got her here, and so far it hasn't been much. But... Good luck. Thank you, thank you, bro. So, um, I'm about to go check on Jarek and we'll see how he's doing. Um, India was there, um, came back shortly after I had left last night, early this morning, however you look at it. And then Jarek was staying there and he's been there all day today. So, I'm just going to check on him, um, probably reboot his uh, camera and things like that because his footage is reached out max so I need to uh, upload try to give him some hard drive back on that camera if he's going to continue to go I don't know what his plan is well um, I didn't know what your plan was but I brought this to at least relieve you of the footage and the stuff so we restart that so it's kind of a blank <coughs> slate and stay another night and then this time Sean's been sleeping okay. it is um, a little after 7 o'clock and we are setting up for the second night of the lock-in on this. Okay.
work in here though, man. Oh, well, see, the neat thing about it is, you see this thing right here? There is nothing to be afraid of because this will go off if there's anything there. I've been in here all night long and this has never gone off. And this will pick up their energy readings. Now, not all of them are bad. There are some that are good out there. What is that? What that, is that, like? that makes you glow in the dark. Them? Uh-huh. <laughs> that make me glow the girls aren't listening. Girls, go to sleep, please. Mommy and Jared will let anything happen to you, okay? times where I've come up here when he's been screaming mm -hmm. in the middle of the night and freaking out because the guy was in his room right. and I feel I feel negative energy oh, yeah. as soon as I open his bedroom door and but walk here's in my I question, feel it though. okay with the case that we had in, Os in Oski okay with that little girl she was creating the negative energy herself because she was the sensitive she was enough to the point of poltergeist type activity, creating telekinesis. In terms of the attachment, because we knew for a long time from day one there's something with Sean, you know. Um, so this is what that was more focused on. Right. Um, so with two nights and three days of 
footage and evidence and stuff. We compressed it down to 50 minutes. Um, which took a while to do. Um, and uh, so we have that here, and it will just show, and everything's kind of labeled in there. So I just had the reveal with a couple of the members of my team for my house. Um, definitely a lot of activity like I thought there was. Uh, I knew beforehand, because I live there, and I'm also a sensitive, that there was stuff going on in my house. I just never really ventured to the upper level of my house, so I guess I didn't know exactly how extreme it was, especially for my children. Or, uh, so halfway through that, a little over half, are you going to make it? Yeah. Are you going to be yeah. okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> sure. And just seeing my son scared like this. Just, just right. Well, well, and it's good to actually see it rather than just hearing him say I'm scared. Or, you know, yeah. assuming Because he wasn't even saying through. it that loud. Like, he was saying it to himself mm -hmm. that he was scared. Yeah. And he's a brave little guy. Um, well, we went through the second night. He got through that first initial, you know, fear of it, and then he jumped right in on the questions. And, yeah, and I see like the lights around him. Yeah, and then he keeps seeing these orbs and stuff that we were picking up. Because I don't normally like orbs, but these anomalies are unusual. And for some reason, he seems to look right at it, and it shows up on the film. My son was very affected by it, and he actually uh, he was communicating with them on video. And at first he was scared, which actually made me cry that I couldn't be there with him. Um, it's just finding out that the group now believes that my son is a sensitive and finding that out with him only being six years old, having gone through it myself is hard for me to take in just because I don't want my kids to go through what I had to go through growing up being the way that I am. Um, other than that, though, uh, a lot of nice evidence. That kind of sums it up for you. So, um, I was there a couple of times. He stayed there for the full duration and um, kind of became uh, embedded into the family there for a little bit. But, I mean, what did you think? Did you think that this is a validation you were really needing? Because it was kind of, you were on to something, but you couldn't quite connect it yet. And then with this evidence, it's yeah. like... It, it definitely gives me a little bit more of a look at what's going on upstairs when I'm not up there. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that I'm on a paranormal team because when stuff like this happens and I can't fully explain it myself, being new myself to everything, I can call them and be like, hey, can you come help me? <laughs> uh, was there fun things for you? Uh, definitely interesting. But anyway, they did a fantastic job. Jared actually ended up staying at my house for two whole days to help me out. Um, Eric was there for a while. Uh, he helped out a lot also. Alright, so our team was invited to another public event. Um, we've done these before. It has been a little while since we've uh, participated in one. Um, this is a location that we've never been to before. Um, it's in Manila, Iowa. And uh, there's the Klondike Hotel out there. And then there's a Manila School that's going to be part. So it's like two places that are be involved in... Uh, the general uh, public tour and investigation and we'll have our vendor booth set up so it should be a good time. All right we are headed out to Manila, Iowa to the school that has been abandoned and the Klondike Hotel. Um, both Eric and I are going into this cold. Um, I know he's got he knows people that have been there and investigated before um, but I really don't know anything about this place. I guess I'm going to just go ahead and hand it over to Eric, and I don't know your gentleman. This is Jared. I'm Jared Austin. Awesome. Yep. Excellent. All right. Thank you guys very much for coming, and thank all of you for coming, and I hope you have fun. If you have any question about either location, Chatter, I can fill you in. Thank all right, you. Guys. Thank you. All right. Oh, boy. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Um, some of you might know me, some of you might not. I'm a team lead for Paranormal Endeavors. We do a, a spiritual and scientific as well. Um, based around central Iowa, most of our team members are within an hour drive of each other. So, um, and this is Jarrett, he's our evidence analyst. Um, so he's the one that gets tasked 
you know, with the hours and hours of the follow-up that uh, is so important to do that the some teams don't job do. job that nobody wants. Yes. <laughs> Watching the wall for eight hours. You know. Endeavors doesn't do too many public events, so this will be a chance for us to, one, put up the booth so we can show our Chapter 5. Um, also, part of what I brought up before of me starting to do tarot readings for the public and trying to raise some money that way as well. This is, uh, if you've seen any of the series, I don't know, I mean, how many here have seen Paranormal Dope? I know Kristen in the back has. Anyone, anyone else? We've seen part of it. Yeah. Um, so I do this thing, it's called the Human Dowsing Rod, basically. So it's, it's kind of like the concept of what dowsing rods are, but it's where you get in this meditative state and your arms get really, like, just loose. Um, and then eventually, what I guess I can describe it as like two magnets of the same feels like this. Something's pulling on your arms, and they move in different directions. So this is evidence that something was kind of curious and coming in over me. This is photo one, and then photo two. <coughs> and I was definitely feeling it at that time. This was back at this is at Ferrar back in I want to say 2008. How many seconds between? Um, they're they're literally one, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three, when we take pictures. There are two to three pictures in a row. And uh, with that, we will turn it over to the next person. Thank you. Thank you so much, face again. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Thank you. Just coming through the threshold, and we're feeling this. In fact, this was something I just discussed with a friend of mine the other day about thresholds. He asked me if I believe in them. I went, what do you mean thresholds? I don't understand the question. You just like, walk oh. through that door. He goes, do you believe in barriers? I'm like, yeah, that's how you protect your house. You don't just cleanse it, you create barrier around your land. Now, why would a school feel like this? That's what I don't understand about Ferrar either. Same thing. Is it a philosophy of when you're happiest in your life, your childhood? Usually, that's why they come back. A moment that, it's like theaters are the same story. In here. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Hello? You here with us? What do you think they use this for? Hooks and stuff in it, so I'm almost wondering. Well, those could be like hanging tools, maybe, or equipment. But why would it be back here off of a classroom? When I talked to the event organizers, they didn't even know this room was there. <laughs> the owners did, but the event organizers had not found this room. You would think something like this would be built off of a gym. Mm -hmm. Not off of a classroom. Now, what was that teacher doing? Because this is negative bad here. I mean, straight up torture. Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely the design of it and the way the halls worked. It was more of a maze than any of the other consolidated schools I've investigated before. <laughs> It's almost like that nightmare when you're when you're in school or you're you're in school and you have that nightmare that you're lost in your school and you can't find your class. <laughs> a little bit, but it's a bird propping up the mousetrap. Oh. oh, that's hilarious. Wow. It's just crazy. Yeah, yeah I left my light flashlight in my suitcase. Did you hear that? Mm hmm. Mm. Sound like a woman. And Eric and I both heard a female voice holler. And so our curiosity got drawn to the basement. Hmm. Is that you luring us to the basement next? Hold doors in the headlock. Not much. This one put my head down. 
basement. Because of that sound. Yeah, exactly. Has that basement smell. We haven't been briefed on mold and stuff, is it? Uh, do you know? Mm, that's why I was saying I wish I had my breathing apparatus. I did bring my inhaler just in case. Even down here, everything is just a maze. Mm -hmm. Strange. I, man, people are going to get lost tonight. Floor buckles. Yep. Just like my house. Old roller skates. Look at these. Is there a roller rink down here? Yeah, there's a roller rink down here. Must have been the gym in the basement. Mm -hmm. And they actually used it as a roller rink. <laughs> now it's looking more like classrooms. Yeah, this is what I'm used to as what a school would look like. That bottom floor was crazy. Yeah. This public event had a uh, pretty well known uh, paranormal investigator and uh, medium as part of the event, uh, Chris Moon, and he was doing a ghost box session. All right, so we're going to jump into a session. Um, basically, we just need you guys to ask questions. We need you to be interactive. So we're trying to reach out to the spirits here specifically associated with this location, okay? Um, the way that I, I usually handle this whenever I do a session is I try to let things just kind of creep into my head. Usually the spirits will influence you to ask the right question and you get the answer that you're supposed to, if that makes sense. So. Technician's assist. There's no other trustee in this house. Okay. Uh, we're, thank you. We're going to go ahead and try to uh, attempt to find out uh, if there's any spirits here who want to communicate. We're going to go have around the room and ask questions. I'm going to start the questioning. Um, besides Bill, who else is here with us right now, please? Questions. How many spirits are there here? The years. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Do you like it? Did you hear that? Do you like me? I thought it said, "Do you want to fight me?" I thought it was a deep voice. Yeah, it was a deep voice. Did you like school? Oh. I hate school. No, no, no it's a. Yeah. All brains one. Moving past technician's assist. They're going to fight. He said I was locked up in that cage. There's a room in there. I've got somebody just right now, just as a note, if anybody has cameras going, I've got something happening inside of my head right here. You wrote it? You wrote it? Are you still in the cage? I'll spit at you. Fear of the dark. I said fear of the dark. Fear of the dark. Get out. Yeah, get out. Now. Get out now. The one in the cage. Were you put in there because you had a mental disability? That's a yes. Why do you want us to get out? They're watching us. Did you attend any sports activities or any other related? Yeah. Are you I, angry? Are you As this is building, and this is building, and it's building, Eric starts getting uncomfortable. I start getting uncomfortable. I'm looking over at some of the other people that I know that are get gifted as well, and the looks on their faces pretty much summed it all. Could we do anything to help you? Mercy. Mm -hmm. or, what keeps or, you here? Because I'm locked up. Jeez. David, keep away. Can we help? <coughs> Go away. 
I hide here. Question. Hide from what? Look behind you. I'm here by myself. Who do you hide from? The wolf. The wolf. A dog. A black dog. A wolf. Um, and I remembered something Joy had sent me in a text the night before. Warning of a black wolf. This is What's the good? <laughs> home of the wolves. You don't want to meet him. You don't want to meet him. The black wolf? Who is this wolf that you're talking about? Thank you. Goodbye. Just name the demon. Did you guys hear that? Mm -hmm. don't, please don't say it. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. We cut right there. We're not going to. Yeah. For a bit. So this thing had said a name that uh, supposedly belonged to a demon. And any time that uh, you come across that, it's best advised not to say uh, the name out loud, as it can attract the attention. Did you guys feel the shift in the room? Yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. How the energy yeah. Was um, I had a, I had one of my, mm, yeah. I had one of my minor ticks, Chris. I was having a spasm right before that happened. Right. So yeah, yeah, no, good. My back legs are hurting. <coughs> I said, you all right? Yeah. And of course, just like a firefighter can't really just walk away from a fire, um, the situation, of course, um, drew our attention. And I looked over at Jarrett, and Jarrett looked over at me, and I was kind of thinking, shit. And it was dumb enough to give us his name, thinking that, hey, if I pretend to be a demon, I'm going to scare them off. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to meet him. That's when everything started going downhill. And then when they named himself, if he's brazen enough to name himself right now, that means he has no fear of the situation. So, I should have asked that question. Yeah, I'm not, not going to be here later tonight, guys. So, here, please be really cautious. Just be really careful. Uh, when you're doing communications, make sure that you're verifying who you're talking to. Um, if it feels uncomfortable in the session right away. Look at that. Reassurance yeah. and getting the prayer robot warriors together because I, I know this is going to be, it's going to be quick, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a fight of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm dead. Serious. You'll be ready. You're good. Yeah. Bye. Thanks again. Guys. Safe travels. And just think about us tonight because we're going to go back to the school. Yeah, be right. safe after everyone leaves. Right. And try to, you know I will. Right. Yes. 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 Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you both. Bye. I kind of at that point knew there was no way I was going to leave this at a public event. Um, it would be dangerous to anybody else that came through. Uh, a couple of people that I talked to didn't want to touch it with a 10 feet pole. And we have a public investigation that doesn't have anything that we really need to do. <laughs> Can't we just enjoy ourselves? You have to kind of wait until everybody's. Yeah, no, as far as I'm saying, I'm not ready to do what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, the only person that joined us that night was Teresa, and I give a big thank you to her. Oh, After everybody leaves the school to go to the Klondike, we will do what Michelle and Chad asked us to do.